A lot of people ask me about the harmonics that I play, and of course, they, they come directly from Chet Atkins and Lenny Bro. Um, and Ted Green did it very well, too. Um, and because of his chord knowledge, he had uh, some really fantastic uh, uh, harmonic arpeggios that he didn't sound like anyone else, you know. And uh, I think Lenny Bro took it to a level that nobody has even come close to. I haven't heard anybody who come close to what Lenny did. Um, so thank you, Lenny, for the, your legacy and for what you, what you left us. Um, there are several ways of doing this. Some people try to do it with just the, the finger or, or, or whatever, and you, you can't get a good sound that way. The idea is that you're supposed to um, get get notes ringing like bells, you know. So there are two ways of doing it. You can do it with a straight pick, and which means that you have to pick the harmonic with your second finger and thumb and the pick, and you touch the harmonic there. So if I take a, a shape like D, now I always put more. Yeah. That's a bit noisy because it's hitting. But if I use the thumb pick, I think I can get it sounding better. So I'm bringing the mid-range on my guitar up a little bit to help me get more, more, more note and more clarity. So the, the, the idea, the principle is harmonic, open note, harmonic, open note, or natural note, whichever you want. So we'll just take that, uh, let's take an E9 shape. We'll start with the harmonic on the sixth string, third, fifth, second, fourth, first, third, so. What you're doing, you're coming up the octave or 12 frets up. Now that shape there, I'm seeing it here. You see that? That shape is right there, 12 frets up. If I move up one more. If I want to change the shape, then I have to... I have to play that exact shape up here. It's six, three, five, two, four, one, Three. So if you go, then you're starting with the open note. Start with four. That's four. Then you switch to harmonic. Now, in order to get the longer, more notes out of one chord, I, I can quite often start with, then I switch to the. So now we've got one. Got all those notes out of one chord there because I extended it. See how it makes sense now? Now the other one, which is nice, is hammering on with your little finger. So you get, see that? Or, I'm 
doing the third note is a pull off. You see that? And everything's ringing. You hear that? So you can't, that's why it fools a lot of people's ear. That's like, how, how, how can you get that harp sound? You know? And everything continues to ring. It's what I was talking about before, the strength in this hand. It will give you that, you know? And I've been doing it for a long time, but even now as I sit here, I can feel that my hand's going, are you gonna change soon? <laughs> you know? So you got those sounds there, this. So basically you're taking shapes and recreating them up here using, using the, uh, what's available to you. The, uh, harmonic against the open note and, and no notes that sometime are just a semitone apart and they ring into one another. The, the first time that I really fell in love with this was when Chet Atkins did uh, a version of Somewhere Over the Rainbow on his album Chet Goes to the Movies. And, and the, the, the song started with the bass playing the melody and Chet playing clusters of harmonics underneath. So it goes, it went. Uh, Like that, and so the bass, the bass did the da, 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 so forth, you know. And so I worked out how he was doing. If I go, then I'm using those three. So it's ring. Ring fingers made so. This one, this is your balancing point right here. Right. Okay. The middle of your hand. Yeah. That's deceptive, isn't it? Yeah. This yeah. Looks like There, that's Michelle by <laughs> Lennon and McCartney. Michelle. Michelle, yeah. And there are positions in there that I've spent a lifetime trying to perfect, you know. Um, I came up with that arrangement back in the 70s and I still play it because, uh, well, no one else does. <laughs> <laughs>but people often ask me about do I have a regiment that I that I use do I have this routine and a person like me I'm very much not a routine person um, I practice what I need to practice you know I I play what I love and I practice what I need to practice um, but I always play what I love and um, uh, there are different ways of practicing and I think the best one is what I call sincere practicing. That is playing the song as if you're on stage and people are watching you, as if your life depends on it, you know.
practice it and play it like your life depends on it, you know? Um, I try not to waste time when I'm playing, you know, like noodling around doing nothing. I, I, I play songs um, and I practice what I need to practice. Like for instance, I might go through periods of playing things that are difficult over and over and over just to, to break down the difficulty level for myself and to get my hands working. Other times I'll practice things like uh, fast songs, cannonball rag, I'll go over it a hundred times purely to build up all my muscles here and my strength and my endurance, you know. And, um, um, but the, the best thing for you is jamming with another player, you know. That's the best thing for your playing. Um, uh, someone who will push you, someone who will challenge you to, to come up with something new in the next five bars, you know, things like that. Um, I also practice improvising. I'll, I'll take a 12 bar blues and I'll, I'll start playing uh, and I won't stop, even if I mess up. I've just, I just imagine that I'm, I'm fronting a band and I'm playing, you know. Forth. So I'm just I'm just trying to come up with ideas on the fly and just to see where I can go and G, yeah, I, I just go up in semitones and just keep going, yeah. And that, you know, sometimes I, I hear myself repeating something and I go, okay, I, I, I did that now. I'm going to go in a different direction now, you know. And it's just fun. It, it, it's good for your, like I can feel my, my heart rate's going up. I'm, I'm I'm feeling like I might break out in a little sweat because. I've, I've gone into that zone of, of, I've got to come up with ideas now, you know? You know, so <laughs> that's, that's kind of fun too, you know? I, when I was 16, I was going, yeah. I was practicing a... I was practicing all that stuff just to get my hands going, you know? I was practicing because I thought that's what I should be doing. But then, once I started hanging around guys who were much better than me, I realized, oh, you know, I, I should be making music as opposed to practicing scales or whatever. It's, in, it's important to know those scales, but how can I use them creatively, you know? So, uh, and also hanging around a guy like Frank Vignola has been really good for me because uh, he always reminds me, you know, that the guitar is not just a guitar. It, it, can be, it can be a horn, 
you know, it can be a drum, it can be a violin, whatever. But, you know, sometimes you'll hear Frank quote something and you'll say, God, that sounds like a trombone. That just that little thing he did just there, you know, like, and, uh, and he always reminds me of that, you know, just keep your mind open and keep, say what you really want to say and don't go trying to embellish every damn thing. Just say the thing, you know? So uh, it's, for a guy like me it's a, who grew up with country music and, and that playing jazz is so much adventure, but it's, I still maintain the, um, the, the kind of rock and roll edge to it, you know? I like that, you know? I like that. Uh, almost like uh, uh, Stevie Ray uh, meets Joe Pass. You know, that's, that's what I like. That, the, Joe's knowledge and abilities and Stevie's edge and blues, you know. Yeah. That's the kind of sound that I like.